When deciding on a capsule project, I knew I wanted to design and build something I'd use. After thinking long and hard, I remembered that my cargo trailer only has power to lights when plugged into a running truck. We use this trailer to camp and transport our two sport quads. Many places we enjoy riding like China Hat don't have power. Without power directly in the trailer, we rely on the truck for our electricity needs. This was frustrating enough I aimed to fix it in one term. This is how. Before we dig into my project, I wanted to thank everyone for taking the time to watch this video. If you would like more information on my project, you can visit my website where I documented the whole process. Now, onto the fun stuff. The first engineering content area I'm going to talk about is SOLIDWORKS. I'm going to show you my progression and some of the features I used. So first, I did a basic sketch with just lines and I used this cool feature called structural member. It's under the weldments tab here on the top. And what that allowed me to do is essentially pick a common structural material. Uh, I picked two by two tubing, square tubing, and it just follows the lines. So I'll show you what it ended up looking like. So here's my frame. Now, I decided on 2x2, two two, but there are a bunch of different sizes. And not only square, there's C-channel, angle iron, pipe, rectangular tube, lots of variety. Next, I designed this simple plate. It's used to secure the frame to the side of the trailer, as well as the solar panel to the frame. Here is my frame assembly. I just wanted to talk a little bit about why this frame design is unique. So my trailer is seven feet wide, so this fits it perfectly, but in the future we want to get an eight foot wide trailer. So we just plan on extending this two by two tubing right here. So it ends up being eight feet wide. Lastly, this is my drawing. My frame is fully dimensioned, and I also included a cut list, which made getting the material and cutting it super easy. So next, I'm going to talk about how I use what I learned in sustainable engineering and AC DC electrical systems to pick out my solar panel, my charge controller, and my battery. And after that, I'll show you my completed project. The power consumption for two LED lights, charging phones, and one fridge for three days is 1,119 watt hours. When deciding on a battery size, I took 1,200 watt hours, which I calculated above, and divided it by the voltage of the battery, which was 12, and that gave me 100 amp hours. So I would need a 100 amp hour battery. For the array size, I took the 1200 watt hours, which I calculated above, and divided it by 5 hours. And that's how much sun on average we get. That gave me 240 watts, and it is very common to round up your array size, so I rounded it up to 300 watts. Now when deciding on a charge controller size, I took 300 watts and divided it by 12 volts, and that gave me a 25 amp charge controller. I calculated the power needed for three days without sun, and because that situation is very unlikely, I used a single 100 watt solar panel that's capable of charging my 100 amp hour battery. In the future, I can add more solar panels and batteries if needed. When deciding on fuses between the solar panel and charge controller and the charge controller and battery and the battery and inverter, uh, it mainly depended on the component that I was fusing. So I just went off of the charge controller fuse, which was 20 amps, and the recommended uh, for the inverter, which was a 150 amp fuse. And for the solar panel, it's not gonna be producing any more than seven to eight amps, so a 10 amp fuse will be fine. So now I'm going to show you the final product and show you kind of how it works. So 
Here is my charge controller. Here is my inverter. And here is my battery. The wires come in from above. Positive gets fused, goes into my charge controller. While the positive for the battery goes out of the charge controller, it's also fused and goes down to the battery. The inverter is fused as well. And then it goes straight to the battery. So the cool thing about the charge controller is it has this little screen that can tell you a lot of information. You can also plug your laptop into it if you would like. So right now it's saying the battery's getting charged at 14.2 volts. This menu button right here. This is codes. We have zero codes, which is great. It is at 14.2 volts. It's 100% charged. The solar panel is giving 1.63 amps to the battery. And the solar panel is producing 18.6 volts. And then this is just the main menu. Since it is fully charged already, because I'm not running a lot on it, you can see this light up here is blinking. That just means it's not charging the battery anymore, it's just keeping it at the level it is at. So, just to show you guys that everything is working, um, I just have a little light plugged in. So there's a sensor on the bottom, when I put my finger, the light turns on, and you can see it's working. And you take it off, and there it is. Now I'm going to show you my solar panels. Here's my solar panel. As you can see, there only is one, but there is room for three. So in the future, if I ever want to add any, I have the room. Here is another view. And here it is all set up on the wall and it's just directly next to the door. So I'll walk out here and you can kind of see how the trailer is set up along with the truck.